Hello Thistledown gang, welcome back to my channel if you've already been here. If not, hi! It's absolutely lovely to have you here and I hope you'll stay for a while. Today I'm showing you how I fixed up this thrift store find of a jewelry box into a display for decked insects and before you think of me as a wing-ripping menace, there will be an explanation as to where I get my insects from later in the video. First thing I needed to do was get rid of the inner workings and the print on the glass. With a bit of wriggling the partitions came out really easy and without tools and when I tried to remove that nail in the side the rest came out as well. So I didn't even have, have to try really. As for the print I'm scrubbing that off with the help of random nail polish remover from the drugstore and I deliberately didn't speed up this part so you can see how ridiculously fast this dissolves. It needed a bit more care on the edges because it doesn't pool as well there, but even that wasn't a lot of work. I cleaned up the rest with a cotton swab and set the box aside for me. Before I get into where I get my insects, I'll show you how I prepare them for a second. Don't get used to the ones in this shot, I end up only using the dragonfly uh, and substituted the other ones for, you know, different ones. I simply fill a small bottle with 70% alcohol, spray them, let them dry, turn them over and repeat, just as a tiny cleaning measure in case of mites or, you know, tiny other organisms that will eat away at the wings and that would be really, really sad. Back to the box. I had experimented with several fabrics for the background. I literally tried all of my velvets and a few cottons, but one fine morning as I just woke up, it dawned on me what I wanted and that I had to make that myself. Of course I had. And so I measured the box, drew the size onto a piece of can canvas cabbage and then started mapping out where I wanted my insects. I usually regard the practice of catching specimen just to drug and then impale them on pins just for decoration as absolutely unnecessarily cruel, but I really like the aesthetics and so my insect collection is completely naturally and uh, organically sourced. I just collect them when I find them and occasionally my friends will bring me dead insects or other parts of animals when they happen upon them uh, as well. And um, this of course has a drawback that a bird may have pecked on them or other insects snacked on them. But I'd rather have a bug with a hole in the back that uh, than, than kill one just for, for sports and eagles. I mean that's that's weird game anyway. There are a few spots one figures out to look at after a while for these things. I usually keep my eyes on the ground in summer when I'm just walking down the street or after a cold spell in spring because June beetles and bees tend to swarm too early in some years. And then it gets cold and then, you know, they perish. Dry attics and big windows are also places to check once in a while. We even once found a mummified very tiny bat in between the huge double windows of my uni's art department and I still kind of regret leaving it in their model collection for them to keep. Anyway, uh, that's where I get my bugs from and it also helps to find friends who are supportive of your weirdness. Back to the project. I then covered everything but the circles in black acrylic paint, which also has the advantage of kind of ceiling cut edges a bit so the fabric doesn't really fray. And I colored out of the lines as well for reasons you'll probably have figured out before I tell you. I wanted a cushion in there because A, the box is fairly deep and B, I need something to stick my needles into. I first tried to wing it with layers of old towels that I glued together, but that didn't really work out, so I got two packs of the cheapest dish sponges I could find. You could also do this with styrofoam, thick craft foam, old garden nailers, old thick package padding, or that weird florist foam stuff, you know, the, the stuff you press into and then it's basically ruined, but it's really, really fun to play with. Um, whatever is around, but I had none of these things, so this was the easiest thing that was available to me. Bonus points because the bigger leftovers can still be used in the kitchen. I glued these sponges together with, you know, those purpose glue stuff, so they wouldn't be too annoying to work with and trimmed them until they comfortably fit into the box. Mm -hmm. 
Then I cut a strip from some black leftovers from a t-shirt and pinned it to the edges. And I did that one edge at a time to minimize the ensuing chaos. And then basically just baste the fabric onto the sponges. I then cut off all the unpainted parts of my cover, folded one edge inward, completely ignoring the lines on the back, and whip stitched it onto the covered edges of my dish sponges. I just used the padding as my template, which worked really, really well, and the acrylic makes the folds stay in place really firmly. The only thing I wish I did differently in hindsight is um, I should probably have cut out the corners in the cover as well as, uh, as I did in, in the sponges. After stitching everything down, I covered the seam with some more paint to make the white holes from the needle disappear and set it aside to dry. In the meantime, I decided to make hangers for the box. There might be some of those triangle picture hangers around somewhere in this flat, but I really couldn't be bothered to search for them, so I just grabbed some wire and improvised. I measured 6 cm, rolled in the edges at the same height of the round nose pliers one and a half times and rounded the hangers over a paintbrush so I'd have the same curvature in both, just to make sure they actually would be the same size. I taped them down on the edges, I'd figured out for them, that's 3 by 3 centimeters, so they would stay in place, and then did one of my favorite things ever. Which is using a stapler gun. I smoothed down the edges of the staples on the inside with the muzzle of my pliers and I stapled also some diagonal reinforcements in, um, but they weren't really necessary, as I said I really like stapling. Then I put in the cushion, here you see that it would have been so much smoother with the edges cut out, but eh. And then it was insect piercing time. If that is not for you, even with the background of my collection, you might want to jump to the timestamp below now or just skip the rest of the video. I had decided on these old-fashioned metal head pins from the thrift shop for the display, but to make sure they really did their job and wouldn't crush the carapace, I sharpened them a bit more using our kitchen wet steel. And I also disinfected them again just in case and then carefully pinned my insects in place. Here you can see what can go wrong with insects from the bird buffet. This one just snapped in half because the body wasn't stable enough anymore. It had a big hole in the back and uh, yeah, that, that didn't really work. But I just used a second pin, which in a scientific setting would probably be abhorrent. But I'm pretty okay with it. This is not a museum. This is a weird private wunderkammer kind of thing. Um, what I wasn't too okay with was that in the progress of fixing that, the dragonfly head snapped off, um, but I fixed that with a diagonal needle, just propping up the head in front of, yeah, basically in the neck, and it doesn't really show from a viewer's angle, so I'm okay with that. And that's it! That's the finished case! I'm really, really pleased with how it turned out, how well the hangers are holding up and how much I like the strange early morning idea with the white circles. I find the space between the um, bee and the moth on the left, no, on the right, a bit empty and I might pin something else down there. Maybe a dried daisy or something of small fake museum tag or so, we'll see. But for now the display really complements my souvenir poster from Amsterdam and I guess it will not be the last one that I'll make.
I hope this video inspired some and entertained even more of you. And should you make your own insect or dried flowers or postage stamps or whatever tiny thing display, please let me know in the comments or tag me on Instagram so I can marvel at it. That would be really nice because I like marveling at things. Have a lovely day everyone, stay enchanted and I'll see you all next time. Bye!